very important game for both of them. There's $12,000 prize money. And in addition, these two teams meet shortly in a test series and one-day international series in the Caribbean. So Vivian Richards and Geoffrey Howard, the two skippers, will be keen that their sides today gain some sort of a psychological... ...runs on the board. John Wright is taking strike, and your commentators Ian Chappell and Frank Tyson. And John Wright, he'd be very keen to get off the mark, having been dismissed for a duck against India in the semi-final. Kippel Dev picking him up off the third ball of the game. So New Zealand, none for four after one over. Marshall to Howarth. On an involuntary shot there from Geoffrey Howarth. In the old days, that would have been marked down as the forward draw. These times, it's called the French Cup. Marshall to right. That's a good shot. John Wright's very strong off his pads. And he picked the gap nicely there between Viv Richards and Roger Harper. A couple of uh, pretty good fieldsmen to beat. Garner to right. Straight up in the air. Gus Logie is underneath it. And he takes an easy catch. John Wright uh, really getting himself into a tangle there as he attempted to play the pull shot. Started to play it as a horizontal bat shot and then when it didn't bounce quite as much as he expected, tried to play it with a straight bat. And in fact, it looked as though he got a leading edge on it as he tried to whip it away on the leg side. Probably was a little bit early there and that leading edge sending the ball high into there. That's about the second time in the last two matches that Gus Logie has been offered a chance such as that. One for 14. And Howarth gets it through the field. First band of the innings and uh, his first confidence stroke. Uh, that was a very good one. Onto the back foot. Hit right off the centre of the bat. The outfield slowed due to the overnight rain. He went back and across this time and head was well over that delivery and that was well played. A confidence builder for Jeff Howard. That's out. Well... I would say from the reaction of the bowler and keeper that uh, there might have been a, a little inside edge on that and also from the reaction of the batsman. Yes, it was one of those stifled appeals. I think even Richie hesitated there. We see him go back and... On replay, you don't actually see the edge, but certainly how it indicated. Joel Garner went on with the appeal. Just a little bit of an inside edge onto the pad. Very difficult for umpires. Howarth, who's a walker, he walked previously here when caught behind, and today he had no intentions of looking at the umpire. New Zealand, uh, two for 24. Davis to Martin Crow. And there's Richards in action. And that's exactly the sort of thing that makes him a champion cricketer. He practices that for hours. Ian Chappell was telling me the other day he was fascinated to watch Richards and Roger Harper, the young man from the West Indies side, in their fielding practice down in Melbourne the other day. Richards practices this hour after hour after hour, and that's the result. Run rate only two runs per over. That's well played. Got onto the front foot and punched it straight. Picks up two runs. Well, that's John Reed's uh, one day international breakdown of figures. A score of 88, and he scored 482 runs. Just played 17 of these matches and 450s.
And that's a good shot. Flicked away over the infield. That's his first act of aggression out there. The ball not quite getting down to the boundary down there, but uh, that one flicked away over the infield nicely. Davis to Reed. It's in the air, just wide of the fieldsman at extra cover. Dawson paying the man there. It was just a few balls ago that Richard shifted Gus Logie from cover and put Felston Payne there. Just out of his reach. It's in the air and he's dropped it. Well, they don't drop many. Desmond Haynes fielding at mid-wicket there. That one has hit straight to him and he just looked to be taking it too casually. Desmond Haynes, who's in our classic catch competition. This is where he took the catch of Graham Woods. A magnificent catch, that was. But on this occasion, it was in and out. Martin Crowe, youngster, only 22 years of age. 100 in limited over internationals. He's out. No way in the world. that they were ever going to drop that one, having given one chance away. And Harper, the man down there who was a magnificent fieldsman, and uh, he wasn't lucky to drop this. Martin Crowe is not going to add a hundred to his other hundred in one-day internationals. Hold out nicely down to deep backward square leg. Really, do you see a catch escape from Roger Harper. So New Zealand now is 20th over, three for 45. one bounces and nicely played big mix up and that was pretty close to the stumps down the other end that's Logie the fieldsman didn't take long to shift Thelston Payne out of the covers Gus Logie immediately moved over there beautiful fieldsman well balanced picks it up has a shot and he was a little disappointed then and he missed the stumps well, that's a good shot not timed very well, but into the gap, and they'll collect two. Three, four, fifty-one. Winston Davis to continue. Reed, eighteen. Crow hasn't scored yet, and your commentators now: Ian Chapel and Frank Tyson. And that could be out. Jeffrey Dujon's having a problem with the sun, but eventually he gets into a position where it's not in his eyes and takes a very easy catch. The second New Zealand batsman to fall in that manner, attempting to play the pull shot and skying the ball with a top edge. And both left-handers to the top edge or leading edge as John Reed, similar vein to John Wright, failed to get inside the line of the ball. A top edge, it went very high. Dujon steadied himself and reads on the way to the pavilion for 18 4 for 51. Jeremy Coney at number six. Been a very successful number six, too, for New Zealand, both in test and one day cricket. But he's got a battle on his hands here. New Zealand uh, four wickets down. Oh, and uh, almost five, although that one's just a fraction outside the off stump. The big problem for New Zealand is they're struggling to score runs at any sort of a rate. And the rough run rate for New Zealand still looking pretty paltry, 2.26. And every time that New Zealand have tried to get a move on, they've lost a wicket. That's happened on three occasions. Oh, and he's got him. Well bowled. A very good Yorker there from Roger Harper. Pro tried to jam down on it, but he was far too late. That was a piece of clever bowling on the part of Roger Arthur because the previous two deliveries he'd thrown up quite a loop to the balls as they came down and this time it seems that he just pushed that through a little bit quicker, a little bit flatter and it was spot on, right on that pop increase. And Crow attempted to come down and it was far, far too late and back went his off stump. 
So Harper strikes in his first over, and New Zealand are a disastrous five for 52. Jeremy Coney, the man who uh, captained New Zealand in his recent tour of Pakistan. He played a very important role in the recent series against Pakistan in New Zealand. Very, very reliable batsman. Beats Richie Richardson at backward square leg. And there's another pull shot in the air. This one will clear the infield. Roger Harper is back there very quickly. And in fact, Coney only just gets back for the second. What a good piece of fielding by Harper. Coney eight, Smith five. They, like all the other New Zealand batsmen, struggling to get this run rate moving. Winston Davis is at deep backward square leg. And they'll get two. Two for seven, beg your pardon, five for 72 New Zealand. After 31 overs, and that'll bump the run rate up. Russ Logie cutting it off just inside the fence, which is the boundary today. Two to Ian Smith. They move to 74. Moving into the commentary position now, it's Bill Laurie and finished his soup, Richie Benno. 33 overs gone, 5 for 78. Roger Harper, the bowler. Smith's taking strike. Gotcha. Out. Well, Dawson Payne in the game. Ian Smith playing his strokes out there and uh, more intent on picking up a few quick runs than in sticking around with Jeremy Coney. Dawson Payne, the catcher. Good piece of bowling. Enticed him to sweep once or twice. Didn't make contact on that occasion. He got plenty of bat to it, but hit straight to square leg and New Zealand reeling at 6 for 78. Where Skipper Richards is keeping complete control of this match. He's not giving away any easy runs at all. He has six men inside the circle in the 35th over. That's great captaincy. Not giving away a single forcing cans. He's a big hitter to try and hit holding over the top. And he gets through the gap and it's well played. One of the few good cover drivers we've seen today. Well, the New Zealand fans watching this game or watching the highlights tonight will be less than pleased with the way things are going so far. Talking to loose head Lenny on Radio Hiraki this morning about uh, today's match. And he was in high hopes of New Zealand doing very well. Who was that, Rich? <laughs> dear, oh dear, we've got a joke out of him at last. <laughs> It's a pretty slow day. Six for 81. Six for 83, and uh, the most runs to come off any over in this inning so far is five. That's been on only three occasions. The West Indies have played it very well. They've kept it tight. Cairns and Coney, two of the more experienced players in the side. And the run rate is still only 2.3. Yep. Out bowled for a moment. He was standing there waiting to see if he was given out court. But Lance Cairns has played on. I think just flicked the off bail as it went through. We'll be able to see on replay. Yes, you can hear the noise. Went through. The bail must have just held there for a second and finally fell down. It took a long time to drop. Slowly off the top of the off stump Dujon made a magnificent save as a ball cut back sharply and Kansas out for five and New Zealand seven for 83. This is the 39th over. Really made a mess of this. They haven't attacked early. Let the match take its course and the West Indians had full control of the situation. Dropped it. 
caught the bold chance. He only went with the one hand. It was nice height, holding a little bit disappointed with himself there. Threw out the right hand. Not a regulation catch, but certainly catchable. Left hand back. And not happy. Between the men, just past Logie. That's a great piece of fielding. That ball finished up just a couple of uh, yards inside the boundary at deep mid-wicket. And the throw came back. Roger Harper, the fielder there. The fielding in the West Indies today has been tremendous. Backed up there, fine bowling. Holding in his 10th over. Two for 19. Oh, and that one flicked away just wide of Dujon. Once again, he was diving away down the leg side. That left hand of his stretched out. But it was played away just too wide of him. Well, they may go for the second. So Harper's figures, 10 overs, 2 for 22. Very good performance by him. A cheer from the crowd here, and the New Zealanders now 7 down for 98. And uh, that tells the story. New Zealand have been kept down to 2.33 and over. Richards would be pretty happy with the way things have gone. And that's it, straight down the ground. And that brings up the 100. The New Zealanders in the crowd making the most of the opportunity to cheer. Yes, they've had much to cheer about today. Because the West Indies completely dominated this match so far. For a brief moment, Hadley hit that so well they thought it was going for a boundary. But there was a man placed down at deep mid-off. Joel Garner to Jeremy Coney. Well, that's a lovely shot. And a huge cheer from the New Zealanders. Well, this one may go for four. Only just. That's the first boundary since the 10th over. And no wonder there's so much noise in the place. Seven for 112. Hadley faces Marshall. Yes, and he's got him bowled this time. Right, once again, that Yorker fired in at his feet. Hadley backing away to try and smash it over extra cover. Trying to give himself a little bit of room, but that's a beautiful ball from Marshall there, right up in the block hole. Doesn't pay to give yourself room when you're facing a bowler of the calibre of Malcolm Marshall. Marshall doing Hadley with pure pace on that occasion, picking up the middle stump, and New Zealand 8 for 116. John Bracewell, the former grave digger. New Zealand don't need him today. They've dug their own grave. Oh, and Joel Garner drops it. Yes, they've dug their own grave with an abysmal run rate. And uh, Joel could have put an end to Jeremy Coney's innings. In the air and well caught. A very good catch there at cover to Felston Payne. Reserve wicketkeeper playing today because Clive Lloyd has gone home and taking a very good catch in the covers. He had to move for quite a bit to his left quite quickly. Well, missed when he was 10. Caught and bowl missed when he was 31 at square leg. Third time unlucky for Jeremy Coney as he hammers that full toss from Joel Garner straight into the cover region. 
And there, Thurston Payne makes no mistake. Nine for one, two, seven. Coney out for 35. Garner to John Bracewell. And I think you can make that 10. No, Richie Richardson doesn't quite get there. One stage, uh, he looked a certainty to make it. Perhaps uh, he was just wrong-footed a little by Roger Harper coming back from the circle. And Joe Garner not too pleased about this because that ball lobs straight in the middle of three fieldsmen. Richardson had the call for the ball. Richardson is the man at deep mid-wicket again, and this could be trouble. No, Chatfield gets back. Marshall to John Bracewell. Yeah. And that little fumble could give uh, Malcolm Marshall the distinction of going for the most runs. In fact, it does. It takes him to 31. He just nudges ahead of Joel Garner on 29. So the West Indies restricting New Zealand to 137 from their 50 overs. 138 with that single. They batted out the 50 overs, but it wasn't a very impressive performance. Overs, the only redeeming feature in that is that they got through to their full 50 overs after at one stage it looked as though they'd be bowled out in something like 39 or 40. The only worthwhile partnership there, Coney and Hadley, 33 and 9 overs, with Coney top scoring in his usual dependable manner, 35 from 76 balls. The bowling figures for the West Indies, Garner, three wickets, bowled beautifully again today. Marshall was astray in direction. Davis, a very good spell of 10 overs, one for 20 innings, just one run on the board. Richard Hadley is coming in to bowl to Richie Richardson, your commentators, Tony Gregg and Bill Lowy. Here we are. Richie Richardson just angling the bat, coming back for the second. That's good running. Yes, the West Indians have looked sharp today. The bowlers were right on line. Their fielding, as always, was great. And now Haynes and Richardson looking busy in this first over from Richard Hadley. Full face of the bat, found the gap forward of the Gally Fieldsman and picked up two comfortable runs. And uh, there it is, after one over. Now, if they can keep it neck and neck with uh, the New Zealanders from here on in, they would have done very well. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to be joking. That'll be the last time you see that comparison. <laughs> I'll tear them apart. <laughs> well, this is a, cha a move, isn't it? When you're only defending 139 runs, this is going back... A hundred years in first-class cricket when a, a captain is opening with a fast bowler, Hadley, with a new ball, and an off-spinner, Bracewell, from the other end. Well, there you go. Would have been worth a go just while there was a bit of shine on the ball, and then have to bring the spinner in just a little later on. No wicket for four. Well, there it is. Things have changed a bit. Wrong again. New Zealand in front after two. Hadley. Hadley just off the short run to Desmond Haynes. He's out. Nicely taken at second slip. Richard Hadley hitting a little bit of bounce just outside off stump there. And Jeremy Coney making no mistakes. And that was the man they wanted because Desmond Haynes is always a quick scorer in the early overs. He tried to hit that on the up, but it wasn't a good shot, really. He came forward, and it was well short of a good length. And it flew to Jeremy Coney, who took a straightforward catch. Great camera work, and a good wicket for New Zealand. It's one for four, and a dangerous man, Haynes, is out for one. Bracewell to Payne. Well, that's through the gap. Nicely played. Two more to Payne. The outfield 
the Sydney Cree ground has been slow all season actually by certainly by comparison with the outfield down in Melbourne yes. nicely placed again once again not played right off the meat of the bat not firmly enough anyhow so they have to settle for three He's driven that one away nicely. It's bouncing away, but uh, it won't get anywhere near the boundary. They'll settle for three once again. He keeps losing that hat if he's out there. It's in the air. Did it work? No, it didn't. Not quite. Well, that is good thinking by the New Zealanders. A little unlucky that they didn't uh, trap him there at mid-off. That one's rolled into the boundary. Umpire Johnson signalling four there. So the West Indies won for 24. I must say, Richie, you've got to give uh, Jeff Harth full marks for trying. He's certainly innovative. Fancy opening the attack with uh, Bracewell, the off-spinner. I heard Bill Laurie talking about that um, on commentary a little while ago. And the shout goes up. Slips and wicketkeeper go up as well. And out goes Richie Richardson. He looked a bit surprised that the slips and wicketkeeper didn't, nor did Hadley. Two for New Zealand now. Can they do it from here? Well, if they do, it's going to be a magnificent fight back. That flashiness of Richie Richardson outside the off stump, which he so, showed so often during the season, proves fatal for him once again. Going for the back foot drive, outside edge, out for eight, two for 24. Bracewell to Payne. This is the 12th over, so there's still only two men allowed outside the circle. And Felson Payne has taken advantage of that. And that's safely way over mid-off. That's good cricket from Felson Payne. They'll have to produce a rethink from Geoffrey Howarth. He may have to take off his spinner and bring him back later on. Chance, I'd say. Very sharp. But it looked from here as though it went to hand very low and very quickly. Chatfield to Logie. That's off the pad. And, in fact, there was contact. There was contact. It must have been bad on to pad. Logie getting it away down to a deep fine leg. As Chatfield straight outside the leg stuff. New Zealand finding it more and more difficult to restrict the West Indian Raiders scoring. Two for 48. Well, there's an example of the tremendous power that this little man, Gus Logie, can generate from time to time. Just love dobbing that ball over the long arm boundary. Didn't quite get hold of that. Fifty up now. Logie has this uh, very flat bat face that he uses. Doesn't roll his wrists and clip it away on the onside. He doesn't ease it out on the offside with the turn of the wrist. He hits it very straight all the time. Cairns to Thalston Payne. Well, what an amazing interlude that was. That was 
a little conversation piece more than an incident at cricket because it seemed to me that Gus Logie and Thelston Payne had a little talk in the middle of the wicket. The ball was picked up, Gus Logie skidded to a halt, turned as he was obviously rejected by Thelston Payne who completely ignored him, turned his back on him. And what a tribute to the nippiness of this little man and he got back. Gorn has gone straight through him. Sheffield uh, right through the defence of Thelston Payne playing off the back foot. And New Zealand have picked up their third wicket. Thelston Payne who'd been held down in the last couple of overs looking to force it off the back foot. Didn't deviate all that much just went straight through that big gap between bat and pad. New Zealand trying to get back into this game, picking up the wicket at Thelston Payne in the West Indies, 3 for 54. Chatfield to Viv Richards. And Richards off the mark. You'll get a second there as John Wright does a bit of acrobatic work at square leg. It's 3 for 56. And they're not as they should have been for New Zealand after that shot. Nicely placed by Gus Logie. So West Indies moving along to towards victory in this the plate final. It's in the air and just wide of the fieldsman at mid wicket. And a boundary to Viv Richards. Unfortunately for New Zealand, John Wright not having a good day in the field for them. That was just hit a little wide. It was a tremendous effort by him. Great dive at the end. A little bit of luck there for Viv Richards. And that's nicely placed once again, just clearing the head of mid on. The other night here at the SCG, it was Keppel Dev who came in and took to Richard Hadley. It'll be interesting to see what happens in this contest with Viv Richards tonight or this afternoon. When it's time for Viv Richards to break loose with Bracewell coming into the attack, the off spinner, 25 overs there, three for 81. He's a fine player of spin. He's been subdued. His partner's playing very well, Gasuogi. But now they may be scattered, and it goes right over the top of the Seagulls, and that's six, and we thought this might happen with the introduction of Bracewell. Glorious on drive. Well, you can have him where you like. When he hits him like that, there's no way you can get him out. That went, oh, two, four, six, twelve, fourteen rows back. Right over the top of the seats. And they're situated just behind the boundary rope. What a beautiful shot. Little dance down, two or three short steps, and then the final big one, and away it went. Crash. <laughs> we miscounted. Is that, hang on, that's not a seagull, though. <laughs> if, it's been, if it's been swimming at Brighton, it probably was a seagull. And that's beautifully played. That's 10 off the over. It's three for 89. West Indies, three for 98. After 28 overs. Perfect day in Sydney, then about 25 degrees, white breeze coming across the ground. You and Chatfield. Beautifully played. What a fine player he's out through that mid wicket region. Brings up the 100. Yes, that's a beautiful shot. Whipped away all the way along the ground too. And into the gap. And lovely timing. We've said before the outfield here, a little bit slower than it is in Melbourne. And so if you can hit it on the ground, it's got to be hit very firmly. Oh, 
Well played, finds a gap at square leg. Well run, Vivian Richards. Six runs off the over, 3.104. Gus Logie gives it the full face of the bat. Big hitter for his size. A very entertaining cricketer to watch. The one thing the West Indians haven't done this summer, and that's field, fielded well, that was a pretty ordinary effort to stop that off, the, off drive. The catch fell short, but there wasn't a lot of desperation in the stop in that race through for four. West Indies, three for 111. Warm day. Reasonably good crowd. There it goes, that's another big one. Over she goes. Four runs, one bounce over the fence at mid-wicket. Well, there's no one down on that boundary and Viv Richards deciding to go for it again. Didn't quite middle that one, otherwise it would have been six. Being it from the base of the bat, actually. And uh, while it did go quite high, didn't quite carry. This time he's having another go. It's straight. Man's trying to get under it. Ball's safe. It's how off the fieldsman. Two more to Richards. Decided to uh, really go for it now. The field are all up, the field's up, and so they tried to tempt him. Gone again. This time it'll be four. Or it'll be six. Crashes into the fence. Four runs. Twelve off the over. Three for one, two, three, and that's fifty for Richards. Good ovation. 16 for victory. Well played. Very aggressive little player, Gus Logie, and he likes to get onto the back foot. Very strong on either the cut or the pull shot. And you see that back foot sliding back. That's when he's at his best on the back foot. In fact, that was probably more of a forcing shot than a square cut. Picked the gap very nicely. Got him. Trying to hit square of the wicket, which is out for 51. Bold Demon Hadley. Viv Richards trying to get this game over in a hurry. Giving himself a little bit of room. And Hadley bowling an extra good length ball. And it smashes into middle and off stump. So Hadley in his final over has picked up the wicket of Viv Richards for 51. The West Indies 4 for 126. Tony to do job. Stopped it. Caught and bowled. He come down the wicket. He locked at the straight drive and the normally safe pair of hands of Jeremy Coney's fumbled. And away it went. They call him the praying mantis. He doesn't uh, miss too much when it comes to catching. Ten runs for victory. Good crowd in today. 12,000 plus. Dujon does that well. With the back foot. This is a very good timer of the ball, Jeffrey Dujon. A wristy player. There she goes, over square leg, that's four. And that's Gus Logie's favourite shot, the pull shot. 
He was picked up that way in the semi-final against Pakistan, pulled the ball in the air and was caught by the fieldsman out deep. But on this occasion, there's no fieldsman outside the circle in that deep backward square area. And that was a safe shot. There she goes, and that's victory for the West Indians. Basis of defence, or will it go? There it goes, and victory by six wickets. Well played, Gus Logie, Vivian Richards, and all the West Indian bowlers. Far too good here today for New Zealand. Well, three cheers for Viv Richards, I say. It was a lovely innings, and exactly what was needed by this crowd at the Sydney Cricket Ground today. The card of the West Indies knock, four for 139. Richards, 51 in 61 balls. Logie, 34 not out, and Payne, 28. But Richards, the gem of the day, 51 from 61 balls. The bowling figures for New Zealand. Hadley was magnificent. Ten overs, four maidens, three for 23, in a team defending a target of only 139. A wicket to Chatfield, but the others, although they tried hard, weren't able to break through at all. So a triumph for the West Indies, as you'll hear now from Tony Gregg. This plate, which is the World Championship cricket plate for winning the match today. And on behalf of both of those organisations, I congratulate you very much. Well done. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Well, captain in your own right for the first time. Thank Big challenge much. ahead for you. Thank you very much. I'm really looking forward to Good it. Good start. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's always nice, especially that, you know, they'll be touring you know, there pretty soon, and it's always nice to get off to a good start. That's going to be uh, straight back to the West Indies now. Yeah, for that's West right, Indies and start. then we, we play against New, New Zealand, you know, in right. the first matches on the 20th, of, you know, in my homeland, so we're all looking forward to that. Well, before you go, $2,000 man of the match, and this, uh, this magnificent... Uh, Benson Hedges, or a couple of magnificent Benson Hedges gold goblets there for you. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Viv. Thank Thanks for the entertainment you've given everyone this year, and good luck in, uh, back in the West Indies. Thank you very much, Tony. Right, well, we've got uh, Jeff Howarth here as well. Fred, will you do the honours there? Jeff, I'm, on behalf of the Victorian Cricket Association and the Benson and Hedges organisation, I present to you your loser's cheque, if I can put it that way, for $6,000. Thank you very much, Fred. And good luck in the West Indies. I hope you do well. Thank you very much. It's going to be a tough tour. Yeah, we've got nine weeks of that <laughs> with Tony. But, uh, uh, five tests, is it? Uh, four tests and right. five one-day internationals. So it's going to be a, a hectic tour, a tough tour, but uh, we're looking forward to it because none of us have been there before and perhaps after it, none of us will want to go back there. Good luck on that trip. Thanks very much, Tony. Thanks for the entertainment. Thank you. Year. All right, well, that's all from down here. Back to you, Rich. Well, a very happy Viv Richards and a nice way for him to start off uh, his captaincy of the West Indies side, Clive Lloyd having flown home to England, and Viv Richards having led the West Indies to victory here against New Zealand. And as you heard, he'll be taking them into the field in the Caribbean against Jeff Howard's side very shortly in four tests.